The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi guys, welcome to the third week of our Hurdler Accountability Group, and thank you for joining us live. Um, so this week we are all focused on the benefits of Hurdler as it relates to recruiting, organization retention, and maximization, and we have Ashley on the line again, who will be walking us through a few features of the app um, that can assist with this. So mm -hmm. before we, we pop into that discussion, um, I wanted to give you guys a, a high-level overview of how a, a tool like Hurdler can be really powerful as it relates to your your business. So the first um, the first big benefit here is there are recruiting benefits um, to Hurdler. So you know we have all of the obvious benefits, which um, you know we detailed uh, in week one as we showed you how to use the app and how you can save time and save money. Um, and in week two, we talked about automation, which again, those videos are available on Shopping Annuities YouTube channel um, for a replay. We talked about that, but there are some less obvious benefits to using Hurdler as well. And one of them is recruiting. So when you're sitting down, actually, Charlie Bayer was the master of this. You know, he would use this um, this as a, as, a, as a benefit to show a potential and franchise owner when he was sharing the business. Because when you're sitting down with a prospect and you can show them that there are real savings in, in terms of tax benefits, um, that can be extremely powerful. So we've all seen on the UBP slides that um, one of the benefits of being an unfranchise owner are potential tax savings. And so for a lot of people, potential tax savings may not translate into anything specific for them when they see that on the slide. But if you popped open a Hurdler account or you showed them how Hurdler can save you thousands of dollars per year um, and save you time and, and also give you some really great um, business management uh, tools as well, then um, that can be a, a very persuasive piece of the puzzle, big part of that conversation. So showing um, tax benefits is huge. Uh, the second thing is to show that we provide a simple but extremely powerful business tool to help maximize those tax benefits. So what I absolutely love about Hurdler is that um, it is dynamic in that it can do a lot but it's dynamic while also being simple to use. So that's not something that you typically see uh, in technology. You usually see that the things that are super dynamic are also very complex and difficult to use. Um, and things that are simple to use tend to be uh, simple in terms of benefits. But Hurdler truly is extremely dynamic in its potential, um, yet really user-friendly. So uh, that's really cool for somebody that's looking at the business to take a look at a, a very powerful business tool in their back pocket that they will have access to um, that can do so much yet be so so um, simple to you so and then third and this is coming soon we're going to be able to show real spending that could be converted into earnings. So, you know, uh, the shopping annuity assessment is an excellent tool. And when you go through that, you, you write in your estimate for what you think that you will spend on a regular basis or on an annual basis. Um, but it's an estimate, right? So it is what it is. Um, whereas Hurdler is going to be able to create a report that shows you what you actually spent um, that could have been converted into earnings. So think about how powerful that is from a recruiting standpoint when you're sitting down with somebody, because um, you all know this is true. Like you tell somebody, oh, you spend a hundred thousand dollars a year, and they'll they'll negate that all day long until you show them proof. So having reports that back that kind of a thing up is pretty um, it's pretty persuasive. So um, again, that is a coming soon feature. That's something that's being actively worked on, and um, and that'll be a really really cool recruiting tool as well. So I absolutely love that. Um, now let's talk about how Hurdler can be powerful in terms of retention. Um, so as UFOs begin their to build their business, um, you know, they, they, there is a little bit of a delayed gratification process, right? It's not, this isn't a job. It's something that you have to build up for to see the commission. So, um, as they are enjoying some of, uh, as they are building their commissions up, they can enjoy additional, um, benefits as well, right? They can see that the business is saving them money, right? They see the tax deductible items. That's money that they're saving that they would not have saved if they didn't have a home-based business, right? So that's really powerful for people to help them stay the course so that they, um, they can do the work to build up their 
on franchise. Um, secondly, see the actual spending um, that they are doing and continue to do, right? And so that's part of that new feature. Like, why would somebody quit or give up if they can see plain as day that they're spending money that could be converted into BV or IVV and help to pay them an ongoing commission, right? So those are two very, very powerful pieces, um, and it helps a lot for somebody's stay power and helps them to you know, um, and, and feel like they're making progress, which is, which they are making progress. It's just something that's a little bit more tangible as they build up their ongoing income through the MPCP. Um, and also it, it gives business leaders a way to maximize results. So, you know, one of the things, um, if you have your organization using Hurdler with this new shopping annuity report, right? Um, wouldn't it be cool to sit down with your organization and and do like a legit diagnosis and triage, right? Where is everybody in your team leaving money on the table? Um, where could they be converting spending into earning? Where are they leaking money? Um, so I, again, I, even without that tool, you can you can see all of the spending because, of course, the statements get brought into Hurdler and you have your tax deductible items that get noted. Um, but it's a really cool opportunity to really just look and see like, OK, um, the majority of your spending is not going through your business. And why is that? Do you, are you unaware of partner stores that you could be using instead? Um <clears throat> You know, uh, did you not know about this specific exclusive product that might be a better choice than, you know, the product you are buying instead? Um, but it gives people a way to be really specific in terms of how they support the shopping annuity growth and the volume generation that gets done uh, from business to business. So um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And I am going to uh, turn this over to Ms. Ashley. Uh, Ashley Rockwell, Rockwell is the head of customer success over at Hurdler. And she is going to demonstrate for us a few more advanced features that can support um, our business growth and, that, and, our, and retention. So she's going to talk about multi-businesses, tracking at a client level, how to customize Hurdler, and how to generate and view reports um, and all of that can be really great for uh, for recruiting and retention. So without um, going any further, um, Ashley, I guess I will make you the presenter so you can share your screen. Okay, perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. All right. Are you able to see my screen now? Yes, I am. Okay, perfect. Um, so yeah, um, like Sarah said, I'm gonna go through some um, more advanced features today to help with retention and organization. Uh, so the first thing I want to talk about was tracking multiple businesses. So um, I know some of you might have other things to do on the side as well. Um, we have people who are real estate agents or Uber drivers or have another small business. So Hurdler gives you the ability to track that business as well as um, your North America business. So to add another business, you'll just need to go to this gear icon in the top right corner here, and then go to the businesses section. Uh, so from there, you can go ahead and just hit the add button, and then you can add another business that you have. And then pick the type to the best fit. Um, so let's say that this is a freelance business I have, and then I can save that, and I'll see it listed with all of my other businesses here. So now if I go in and I need to tag um, different expenses or income or mileage. When I go ahead and select that it's a business expense, it's going to prompt me to select which business it's for. So I can just select the business. And then when I go take a look at that, I'll see it's tagged to that specific business. Um, so as you can see here, I have some different things tagged to my different businesses. And it it's the same way in your income as well. So if I tag something as business for my income, it will ask me which one it's for, and I can select it. And the same way with mileage as well. So just selecting the business and which business it's for. And then when you actually go into your reports over here on the left-hand side of the screen, and 
I can select, for instance, my income by business. It will show my breakdown here of how much income I'm making for each of my businesses. Um, and then if I do export a detailed report of it, I'll be able to see those breakdowns as well. So that's um, how multiple businesses work. And you can add as many as you'd like in Hurdler. Um, so you know, we have people who have you know, one business to 20 businesses. So you can really get um, to the really detailed um, business level calculation for each of your businesses. The next thing I want to talk about was our um, tracking at the client level. So in addition to tracking your other businesses, you can even track the clients for each of your businesses. So if you go back to that um, gear icon in the top right corner and click on the clients button, um, you can add any client that you need. So let's go ahead and add a client. So first you choose which business the client is associated with. So let's say there was my business and their name is um, Bob Brown. And you can add an email client, a client email as well, but you don't have to. So I can go ahead and save that. And now um, they've been added to my client list. So now when I go back and I tag something to that specific business, it will ask me if I want to tag it to the client as well. So let's go back and tag another expense. So I'm going to tag this to business and to my business. And then I'll see either the option for no client if I don't want to tag it to a specific client, or I'll see the client I added. So I'll go ahead and tag it to the client I added. And now later on, if I want to export reports by clients, I can see that de those details as well. So again, you can add as many different clients as you want um, and really keep detailed um, transaction information as far as how much you're spending on each client, how much each client's bringing in, if you're driving certain mileage for clients. So it really helps you see the full details of all of that. Um, now let's talk a little bit more about customizing Hurdler. So you might have seen that there's a lot of different default uh, categories for both income, for both um, business expenses and personal expenses. We can actually add any of your own that you want to. So if I go to that gear icon on the top right again and go to business categories, these are all the different default categories. Um, if I, these are the parent categories, and if I expand them, it shows kind of those lower level category names. But if I want to add something that I'm not seeing there, I can go ahead and do that too. So I just have to hit the add button here and I'll type in my category name. So let's say I wanted to track specifically um, my um, cost of goods sold for pet supplies. So I wanted to be able to see the breakdown of each of my cost of goods sold instead of just um, grouping them all together. So then I could select the parent category cost of goods sold. and other cost of goods sold. And I just save that. And now when I search, I'll see it listed there. So if I go ahead and my expenses, and let me expand this one, I can select category and then I can search for it. So there's the one I added and I can select that and tag it as business to my business and save it. And now that way it will be um, counted towards that custom category I created. So in addition to adding custom business categories, you can also add custom personal expense categories. So we'll go up to that settings menu again. And then there's another um, item here called personal categories. So again, there's tons of different default ones to help you track all of your personal spending and see where you're spending money there. Um, but let's say you wanted to add something of your own, you just hit that add button again and can complete that and save it as well. And then again, it will show up in that list. So when you're tagging a new expense and want to tag it to that category, you'll be able to select it. Now, one of the most useful things um, Hurdler can help you with is your taxes. So I mentioned this earlier, but we have all these different reports over here. So if we click on reports on the left side of the screen, and there's this drop-down menu here, there's a ton of different reports. Um, and a lot of them will give you a little graph um, to take a look at them kind of to give you an idea of what they look like, but then you can export the full details of all of that. So let's just take a look at the profit and loss here. This shows me the profit and loss. I can hover over different things to show me how much income, expenses, the, in, the profit or the loss that I'm making. The, the most useful ones for taxes though are these ones down here 
in the taxes section. So we have one for a Schedule C that will actually send you the Schedule C for each of your businesses. So to export that, you would just need to click on it and then select what year it's for and select which of your businesses it's for. And then it will email it to you. So you just hit the email report button. The other one that's really useful is the tax report. If you click on that, um, you can select the start and end date of it, and then it sends you the detailed report with all of your information. So a lot of people will actually just add their CPAs on here too. So they'll add that on and email directly to their CPA since it has all of their data in it. So let me just show you a quick view of what these look like. So here's the tax report. I just emailed to myself a little bit earlier. So as you can see here, it has the full details for all of your different businesses, how much income, what your total expenses were for each of your tax categories, and your mileage. And then there's all these tabs on the bottom that will show you the full details for each of those. So let's first take a look at the business income list. So here it shows you your business, if there's a client related to it, which client it is, um, if there's any description or notes that you added, um, if there's a receipt that you added, you would see the link for that here. And it gives you your date and amount for everything. So here you can really see all of your transactions. You can also use the different filters and sorting tools in Excel if you wanted to look at a specific business. You could pop a filter on it and use that to um, filter which business you're looking at. Um, then next we have personal income. So this is anything that you tagged as personal would be listed here. If there's anything that you hadn't tagged yet, like you forgot to go through and tag it, that would be listed here in the pending income. So that just kind of helps you keep track and catches any of those things that you hadn't yet categorized. You can go back in and categorize them to make sure that you have them captured for your tax purposes. But after our income is our expenses. Whatever too far. So first you have the business expense list. And again, this is a full detailed list. So we have the category you tagged it to, um, what the tax category is, the business and clients related to, um, the vendor or merchant you bought it from, any sort of notes or anything that you add in there. And then um, again, the receipt, if you added a receipt, you'll have the receipt image there that you can access at any time. And then the other transaction details. And then we have the same thing for personal expenses. And again, having those pending expenses, like I mentioned. And then finally, we have the mileage. So again, it's all broken down by your business and clients. So you can kind of view that in very um, um, extensive detail. And then it has all of your other details, like your start location, end location, your duration, um, distance, and the deduction. So it really gives you that detailed mileage log. Um, in case you ever get audited, you have all of that proof of all of your mileage driven. Now, another cool thing is um, we let you track some of your personal mileage as well. So we have some categories, um, such as charity, uh, medical, and you can actually track that as well. And it will show you the deduction for that. If it's if applicable. So none of the ones I had tagged here were um, say any of those categories. If they had, it would have the deduction amount here, which is pretty cool. And finally, again, any mileage you hadn't yet tagged would show up here, just so you can go through and make sure you capture all of that. So that's the tax report. This is really useful for helping complete your taxes. I mean, all of the data is right here that you would need to complete your taxes, all those totals. Uh, so it makes it really, really easy to do. Now, that other report I mentioned is the Schedule C. So this is actually um, exporting a Schedule C uh, directly for any of your businesses. So I have that up here. Um, so it just fills in everything for you with all the data from the app. Um, so you can really, really use this. It's really helpful for completing that Schedule C in your taxes as well. And like I said, you can do this either for your entire account or for each business. So if you do have multiple businesses that are unrelated, um, you could have one for each of those to make it really easy for yourself. So those are the main features I wanted to go over today. Um, now I just wanted to open up for questions and see if there is anything else that I could help clarify or if there's anything else I can hit on. Yeah, I mean, that was very, very informative. And I'm not seeing any questions, but if anybody has any questions, you can be, feel free to pop them in the question box. Um, and then if not, okay. I think that was like really straightforward. So that's really cool. So I'm going to go ahead and show, um, not share my screen yet, but I'm going to put my thing up here for like a nice recap. So thank you, Ashley, so okay, much perfect. for that. Um, yeah, of course. Cool. All right. That was really great. I'm just going to check one more time and it looks like we're still good. So 
Um, so guys, thank you so much. I do want to let everybody know again that the recap for week one, week two, and soon week three um, will be available on Shopping Annuity's YouTube channel. So if you go to youtube.com forward slash shopping annuity, click on the videos. It's the last most two recent videos. So you can go check those out and be sure to share them with your team and your organization. Um, for this week, the mo the big focus here is um, you want to check for consistency and um, meaning like, are you being compliant? Are you using the app or are you forgetting about it? Just figure out what's working for you and what's not. It should be starting to find the groove that works by now if you haven't. Or if you have any trouble or questions, you can always reach out and ask for advice as well. And then secondly is, you know, mess around with some of the new features that Ashley has been walking us through over the last couple of weeks. So last week she focused heavily on um, suggested rules and time tracking, which were really great ways uh, to automate, but also really great ways uh, to help you be consistent with using the app, which of course is the most important part here. Um, and then of course she did just go ahead and walk us through some really cool, more advanced features this week as well. So um, my advice though is that if you have not found uh, your groove yet with being consistent with the app, just stay focused on that. These other things you can add in and start to grow uh, into these more advanced features. They're not difficult to use, but you just want to master one thing at a time. So with that being said, guys, thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. And I do believe, like I said, that... Um, uh, oh, hold on one second. I'm going to go ahead and I'm not going to, to end the session because I am seeing some questions that just popped up and I do want to give Ashley a chance to respond to them. So, um, so, okay, Rosalie, this is a great suggestion. It says it would be helpful for newbies to know what additional categories we could add for Market America business. So, um, so that's something, Ashley, that maybe you and I can chat about is maybe adding some more pre, um, loaded categories that might be helpful. Um, or, or maybe Rosalie, one of the things we can do is put together like some ideas, you know, just being very 100% aware that we are like, I'm not a tax professional and the company is not going to give tax advice because tax law changes so much. So, but I can share with you personally, like things like auto ship, you know, you may, you may put some of that into marketing if you purchase things for trial size marketing, whereas if you're using it for yourself, then it's just a purchase, right? So there are certain things that might be specific to the business that we can put together in a helpful article. Um, maybe there are some preloaded things in there or reminders. Like for example, if you get UFMS, that is a subscription for something that you need for business management. So um, that can be, you know, categorized a certain way. Um, so we could probably put together a nice little uh, reference guide or something. Uh, Susan wants to know, can you enter business expenses for July? Um, yes, definitely. Um, so I'm guessing, are you just saying sorry to Susan? Saying what? Uh, which she, I guess she's just getting started now, so she hasn't pulled yeah, in all the historic data. Started, exactly. Okay. Yeah, definitely. So if you've linked to your, your bank or your credit card, um, you actually may be able to pull in those transactions automatically. Um, do you want to pass the screen share over to me again? I can pull oh, that yeah. up. Absolutely. Hold on one sec. I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to pass it back over. Um, okay, perfect. Can you see my screen now? Yep. All right, perfect. Um, so if you go up to this um, gear icon in the top right corner, or in the uh, mobile app, it's three dots in the top left corner. Um, there's a banks and integrations button, so you'll just click on that. And then there's this historic income and historic expense button. And you can actually use this to pull in your more historic expenses. So if you just click on it, you can choose the date you'd like to go back to, and HERSA will automatically pull in as far back as we, as we can, as your bank allows, um, to help you get caught up. Okay. Now, some banks won't allow you to pull back all the way to January 1st. Um, some banks limit it to three months or six months, um, so you may not be able to pull all the way back. So what you can do in those cases is we recommend just entering the lump sum of your expenses per category and your income per month, dating back as far as you have records for. So you could just kind of go through your bank statements um, or any list that you have and then enter those manually by going to the expenses section or income section or mileage section and just clicking the um, add button. So there you can just manually enter those expenses. Um, you can choose the vendor it's from, um, the amount, the category it falls into, and then also put in any other notes or anything that you have. 
Awesome. So great. Okay. So the next question is, I don't have a desktop. Can I use a tablet? Yes. Um, so our um, for tablets, you can either use the mobile app or you can actually log into the web app and that way you can use it in landscape mode if you have a keyboard or something like that. Uh, so the address for that is just web.herdler.com or you can just go to our website, herdler.com and there's a login button so you can log in from there. Uh, but yeah, you can definitely use it on your tablet as well. Awesome. Um, okay. So would listing clients or customers be HIPAA compliant for private practice slash therapy? Oops, sorry. I think you cut out there. What was oh, that's okay. So the question is, would listing clients or customers be HIPAA compliant for private practice and therapy? Can you hear it? No. Okay, so it looks like we may have lost Ashley. She may jump back on. I don't know the answer to that, Linda, but if you could send me an email on that question, it's Sarah Rose, S A R A H R O S E at marketamerica.com, then I would um, be happy to take a look at that. Um, let me just take a look at here. How about the mobile app? Should we download PC before? Yeah, and, um, the mobile app is just as good. I actually mostly do the mobile app, so I would just personally use the mobile app um, if that's what you're more comfortable with because whatever you're more comfortable with is what you're going to end up um, being most compliant with. So definitely the mobile app is fine. You just want to make sure that you're accessing it through your back office. All right, guys. So um, with that being said, I can't hear Ashley, so I am going to go ahead and close the session, but we did get all of the oh, I, I can't hear you now. Okay. Can you so hear me only, now? The only it, it cut out. It was it's back now though. <laughs> okay, that's fine. So there was only one last question, and it was wondering if um, okay. you're listing your customers in this. Is it HIPAA compliant? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure because I guess is that for medical purposes? For, yeah, for medical and therapy. So that might be a follow up question. So what I what I recommended is like. Yeah an email and then we can kind of dig into that a little bit further since we don't have like an official response for that right now yeah definitely that sounds great cool awesome all right guys well thank you so much have a great rest of your week thank you for joining the replay will be available on youtube.com forward slash shopping annuity and um, if you have any other questions as always feel free to use the chat box on hurdler or send us an email or whatever it is that uh, so that we can provide you guys with some support all right have a great week talk to you soon